Hello, welcome to my December wrap up video. I'm filming this eight days into January because I've been so busy, which means I'm not gonna make any individual book videos this month. It's just gonna be all in one thing. I have to get back to work. <laughs> I read three books in December and then I also listened to three audiobooks. In my last month's wrap up, I mentioned that I was gonna be reading Great Expectations for my book club and that was probably gonna consume me for the whole month. Um, but I actually didn't start reading this until like the 26th of December. I was just kind of like pretending to myself that I was reading it and I finished it on the first. So technically this is my first read of 2020. Um, but I just kind of didn't want to get into it yet at the start of the month. Um, so I just decided to pick up a thin book from my shelves. <laughs> Why did I say thin? A small book, a uh, few pages. Um, and I decided to grab Human Acts by Han Kang. Um, I read her second novel, The Vegetarian, last year, I think around February. Um, and I really liked it. I thought it was quite weird and surreal and like abstract. So I was going to this not knowing literally anything that it was about. I didn't even read the back cover um, and thinking it'd be some sort of ethereal stuff. It was not. It was not at all. This was a very painful book to read. It is about the, um, it's kind of historical fiction. It starts in the 1980s with the Gwangju um, student uprising in South Korea and follows several characters um, until the year 2013, I think is the last like chapter. It is all about how terrible people are and how we can do really bad things especially when we're in big groups. It's about the cruelty of governments and military regimes and um, about like the human element of that, like the human sacrifice and the um, like what happens to the like pawns in the big game of war. This book literally starts by talking about dead bodies for, for like 20 pages. It's really like really quite harrowing and painful stuff and not what I was expecting at all. So I didn't really like it from that perspective. If I knew it was about, I would have been like, this seems like an Im important um, thing to read. But it just really threw me because it was not what I was expecting at all. I did expect it to be very well written, which it was. Um, and I think the characterizations were really good. But one thing I didn't like about it is that it jumped between um, different stories and they the characters are always like related to each other, but it was kind of hard to, figure out how for a while and also because their career names there was a lot of like name repetition in a way that made it hard to like remember particular characters that kind of thing just sort of frustrates me because it means that I can't follow along with the story as like easily as I would want because in the back of my head I'm trying to remember how people are related and not actually being like in the plot after I finished the book I went back to the introduction and read that I never read introductions at the start they're all spoilers um the introduction was written by Deborah Smith who is also the translator for this piece of work and um it just gave a lot more context on like why she wrote this book. So in 2013, the daughter of the man who'd been running the country between 1961 and 1980, um, who was then like assassinated and that kind of kicked off the tales of this. Anyway, his daughter became the president of um, South Korea, which is like mental. You can tell, I don't know anything about South Korea. So it says in the introduction that this whole book is sort of a reminder of what the government essentially is capable of and has done in recent history and um just kind of a warning for let's not get to that state again uh which is kind of scary so yeah i thought this book was well written and interesting and if you want to read a lot about dead people and sadness and just generate some despair in your body this is the book for you i wouldn't read it while trying to put off reading charles dickens though that was a bad choice the next book i want to talk about was when i was still putting off reading charles dickens i think i heard about this first on hannah witten's podcast doing it i don't remember what like triggered me to want to read it but it was just suddenly like one day i was like i really urgently need to start reading this book right now and this is come as you are by emily nagowski i read this on my kindle not i feel like i need to note because i was like embarrassed of reading it in public literally because the paperback copy in the uk is of incorrect dimensions <laughs> if you've been on this channel long enough you would know that i don't like non-standard book sizes especially since you can't really see but my my bookshelves are very tight and it literally wouldn't fit in with my paperback books so uh, yeah i have a very low level protest against non-standard book sizes but actually i really liked reading on my kindle because it meant that i just highlighted a lot of bits um i think it's easier 
for it's a, it's easier in a physical book for me to flip through and see things I've noted down but this was like a very easy like digestible list of the things that I was thinking and like wanted to remember from the book so that was really handy. Come As You Are is a book about female sexuality um, and it was amazing. I feel so empowered to improve my sex life and that's great. I'm now like why don't I read books all the time about how to improve myself and not just like namby pamby like be more productive inspiring shit but like literally how do you how do you change the way you think about something in order to make it better in your life because this has been transformational i've actually bought this book up at a few parties recently in the context of chatting about probably about sex i've been like well actually i read a book about sex last week and two times two separate occasions two um women have been like what was it called and I've been like come as you are and they both were like oh my god I read that I love it <laughs> so it's all about how to approach sex in a way that will make it best for you so it starts out by talking about like literal genitalia and how they're constructed and how that has influenced where we receive pleasure from and that kind of thing um basically debunking a lot of myths um about women's bodies and also generally women's sexuality. It has a whole thing about um, accelerators and brakes, how wanting sex, um, it doesn't matter how much you like really want it, if there are things that are like holding you back from enjoying it, it's never gonna be that enjoyable, um, which is just like pff, breakthrough. It said a lot of interesting things about constructing the right context for you to have the best sex you can have. So kind of figuring out what are those things that, that activate your brakes and how do you remove them from that context and what are the things that like accelerate you and how do you bring more of them into your sexual life there's a bunch more in there um but wow 50 pages into it i messaged my boyfriend and said you are reading this book <laughs> and um since he's read it and we had a really interesting talk about it and we just both feel really great so why not do that and improve your sex life caveats the literal book, there were lots of things that really frustrated me about it. Um, I think uh, she used so many metaphors, it was hard to keep track of and I, I, that really frustrated me. I think the way it was actually written was a bit too personable for my tastes. Um, so I'm not saying it's like the, the best book ever written, but the content is really transformational. So would really recommend it on that basis. The next thing is audiobooks. I let myself read Harry Potter once a year um and usually that's around december i try and <laughs> i try to not read it too often because i don't like it when when you know something so well that you can't even enjoy it anymore uh, which is why i haven't watched lord of the rings in like three years and i'm so excited too when i decide to approach it again um but i actually did listen to all of the harry potter audiobooks in like june but then it got to december and i was like december is so like christmasy and so magical and i need to do it again so um yeah i listened to the audiobooks i listened to the first three in december and i finished the fourth one the other day and you know there's still more to go which is just wonderful oh i couldn't live without those audiobooks i'm kind of tempted to the next time listen to the jim dale versions instead of the stephen fry versions but i think that would just like Every time I think about it, I'm like, that sounds appealing, but also that would freak me out. And I can't deal with having like a fractured audiobook reality for Harry Potter. Like I've already have to deal with like separating the books from the films. I can't, I can't split that any further. Anyway, finally, I did read Great Expectations by Charles Dickens. We had our book club chat the other day. Um, it was, it actually wasn't that interesting a chat because we mostly agreed on everything. Great expectations, like Charles Dickens is not gonna write a bad book, you know, <laughs> like it's almost flawless. Um, the way, the the things we had to discuss about our, were like our feelings about certain characters. So this follows the tale of a young boy called Pip as he grows up. And essentially um, the story of his life is at the whim of other people. <laughs> um, he doesn't seem to have that much agency. Um, so he's really, poor um his sister is married to a blacksmith and he's going to become an apprentice blacksmith um and then some things happen in his life to change that and he then has a lot of expectations upon him this is only the second dickens i read the first being a tale of two cities which i think i can say i preferred but i kind of going into this i already sort of knew the shtick <laughs> like that 
nothing happens for no reason and everything kind of like coalesces and comes back together towards the end. So I feel like just having such a belief in that, a lot of the, um, a lot of the kind of surprises were somewhat spoiled for me because I accepted that they were possible. Um, and I'm trying to be really vague. <laughs> Is it working? Um, the one thing we did have a good chat about in book club was the last line. So there's a time jump at the end of this book. It's like an epilogue. And um, I, there was, there's a very vague final sentence. And I read it in a certain way that really annoyed me. <laughs> and um, I read it in the kind of like happily ever after way. And I disliked that. And it turned out that my two book club friends had interpreted it like completely differently and completely differently from each other. One of them thought it was like the opposite of mine and one of them thought it was like the middle road. And then we looked at our editions and we actually have different endings, different final sentences that kind of change the ambiguity of the ending. Um, and we read up about it a little bit. I'm sure so many people watching this video probably know all of the drama that is the end of Great Expectations and, and how people have um, have like verbalised how that means over the years. But basically, Dickens just like changed the ending at the request of Wilkie Collins or something like that um, to be more happy because <laughs> apparently at the time, um, like sad endings or uh, well, non happily ever after endings were um, were not as enjoyed by the people. So that's a thing. My other main conflict with the girls about this book was um, I just like have less patience with every single character. Like I don't, I think most of them did irredeemable stuff and it's like, yeah, but you know the whole context and there's a reason why they've become this and they've had a really sad life. And I'm like, doesn't excuse them being an asshole now. I'm just a really harsh judge of character. And I think a lot of the people in this book were butt faces. We have decided, I have forced upon everyone, that we're going to read a Dickens book every December until the end of time, um, which is, I had to promise that with a caveat of not 2020, but in 2021, we'll read A Tale of Two Cities, because neither of them have read it, although I swear it was a book club book of ours like years ago. Um, but next year, I think I said, can we read David Copperfield, which I'm now regretting, because I didn't realise how bloody long it was. Um, so if any Dickens fans out there want to recommend the order in which we should read our Dickens um, with a preference towards slimmer novels at the start, <laughs> slimmer volumes please, um, please do let me know, that would be great. I actually recorded a video on New Year's Eve all about goal setting and I just couldn't export it which was really annoying, like I still can't export it and I just got so frustrated and gave up and it had so much good content in it so I turned it into a Twitter thread. If you are still thinking about your goals for 2020. I'll leave a link to that below. Have a look, have a think. Um, and yes, I shall see you at the end of January for my January book. I've already read a few. And I'm also just so amped up about reading this year. I just want to read all the time. I just want to inhale books and inhale knowledge and stories and, oh, books are so good. This is so good. I hope you've enjoyed this video and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.